Hi guys and welcome back to another makeup and true crime video. I hope you guys have been loving these videos and if you have go ahead and hit that like button before this video even begins because you're gonna love it. I know you will and make sure to subscribe because I would love to have you join the fam and if you have any case suggestions please go ahead and leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to get to them. So today's case is a story based on the relationship between a stepchild and a step parent and step parents have always just been given a bad rap ever since we were little you know like Cinderella's evil stepmother but in my experience Experience, that's really not the case. One of my best friends is a stepmom and she honestly is one of the best people I've ever known and she's so good to her stepkids. So I really don't believe in that stereotype but today's case really really fuels that fire. Emily Dietrich and Adam Baker were in a relationship and during the course of this relationship they became engaged but there's really not much else known about them. But when Emily was 19 she gave birth to a baby girl on 16th November 1999 in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, Australia. And they named their baby girl Zara. Zara, what a unique, unique name. Not long after Zara's birth, Emily was diagnosed with postpartum depression and she couldn't handle raising a child. She states that she didn't have the strength to go on and she didn't want to hate her child or be that mother that ended up on the news that strangled or smothered her baby, you know? And her depression was pretty strong, so she made the decision to give Zara up at eight months old and she gave full custody of Zara to her father, Adam, because she felt that Zara would just be safer with him. Adam took custody of Zara and he moved in with his parents in Giru, Queensland, so he could take on a job at a sugar mill so he could support himself and Zara. Their first few years together were great. However, in 2005, the worst thing that can happen to a parent happened to Adam. Zara was diagnosed with bone cancer and then later on diagnosed with lung cancer. Just, oh, I hate the fact that cancer even exists, but the fact that it can happen to kids, it's just, so due to this cancer, she ended up having to have the lower part of her legs amputated. So she needed a prosthetic leg and she also lost her hearing. So then she ended up needing hearing aids. Despite this, Zara seemed to be a happy, energetic child. She apparently told another woman um, at a hospital while she was receiving cancer treatment, it's all going to be okay because I'm going to get a Barbie leg. So I don't want you to be upset. Like, it's so cute. So 18 months into Zara's diagnosis, amazingly, Zara's cancer went into remission and the Baker family could finally breathe again and live life again, be happy. During this time, Adam sought comfort online in online chat rooms and in one particular room called IMVU, which was a gothic chat room. On here, he met a woman called Elisa Fairchild and she was from North Carolina and the two of them just immediately clicked. Adam was not known to have a ton of friends and he was a pretty lonely guy. So the fact that this woman, Elisa, had shown him just, you know, a little bit of interest, he was completely smitten. Elisa was 40 years old at the time and had been married six times already and had three children and Adam was only 33 at the time. Back in North Carolina, Elisa told all her friends that she had fallen in love with this younger man from Australia. So Adam then flew Elisa to Australia and the two of them quickly got married in 2008 in Queensland. However... Elisa conveniently forgot to mention the fact that she was still married. They then abruptly moved to North Carolina, taking Zara with them. And Adam's family was not happy about this. They didn't particularly like Elsa. The cold never bothered me anyway. They found her to be really strange and that she told a lot of far-fetched stories about how she was a police officer, then a bounty hunter. And Zara's grandmother was especially heartbroken that they were taking their granddaughter so far away from them, especially when she was finally getting back on track with her health. So after moving to North Carolina, the Bakers settled in Hickory and they lived with Elisa's dad, but he eventually kicked them out because Elisa could not stay sober and she was struggling with her drinking problem. They then moved into an apartment complex complex, but then they were kicked out of there after two months because their behavior would disrupt other neighbors in the area. Their landlady at that apartment actually said that the couple was super dysfunctional 
And she was actually surprised to find out that Zara was actually their daughter because she saw Zara so rarely that she actually thought it was Elisa's granddaughter coming to visit them from time to time whenever she did see Zara. They then moved to a trailer park where Zara was actually attending public school until they decided to homeschool her. It's not known though if Zara was ever actually homeschooled. It is suspected that Elisa took Zara out of school because reports of child abuse and neglect were being reported to the school and this was impacting Elisa. Many neighbors claim that Elisa was physically and mentally abusive to Zara and that she was being neglected. They state Elisa would hit Zara and make fun of her prosthetic leg. Two teachers visited Zara's home to check on her after she attended the public school with a black eye in the fourth grade. A teacher actually gave Zara her personal cell number in case Zara ever needed to reach her outside school hours. Child Protective Services actually visited all their homes every time they moved to check up on Zara, but they actually never took any action. They didn't find sort of any reason to take Zara away from Elisa and Adam. Whenever Elisa and Adam were questioned, they would just state that Zara had tripped or fallen down. Reports of Elisa's abusive behavior was actually investigated by social services, dating as far back to 1999 in regards to her own three children and the abuse she inflicted on them. So that's why it's believed that Zara was taken out of public school so that her abuse could be hidden. Now, if you're like me and you're wondering why the hell didn't Zara's dad, Adam, do anything if Zara was being abused? Well, in simple terms, neighbors called him whooped. What Adam saw in Elisa is so hard to fathom. Not that looks are everything, but she honestly was not attractive at all. Not only appearance wise, but her behavior and attitude was just gross. And Adam apparently was completely miserable. Their fights were really bad, but it's assumed that Elisa sort of kept Adam in check with all her sexual favors to him. They called it sexual rewards, like like he's a dog, you know, like little doggy treats. To them, it seemed that Adam was just sort of ignorant and he couldn't see the behavioral pattern of Elisa abusing Zara. Like he just refused to see it and he kind of always believed her excuses. And on the other side, they believed that Zara didn't want to disappoint her father, you know, in his new relationship, his new life that he had just started. She didn't want to be the reason why her father wouldn't be, you know, happy. And they believe that Zara was almost protecting Adam by not letting him see the truth about Elisa. So on the early morning of October 9th, 2010, Elisa made a 911 call. She called to report a fire in the back of her house. And when police arrived to the scene, they found Adam's work truck reeking of gasoline and it was on fire and they also found a ransom note at the scene. The ransom note that the police had found was addressed to Adam's boss and his landlord Mark Coffey. The note stated that they had Mark's daughter held captive and that they wanted one million dollars for her release. The police quickly went to Mark Coffey's house and they conducted a welfare check on the home, but they found that everyone was accounted for and safe, so they just brushed off the incident as a prank. Later that same day, Adam was the one to make the next 911 call, and this time he reported his daughter, Zara, missing. He explained that he believed that someone had lit his work truck on fire and put that ransom note there as a distraction to take Zara, and he believes that whoever took Zara thought that Zara was actually his boss, Mark Coffey's daughter, because the work truck was at Adam's house. When he was questioned, Adam stated that he hadn't seen Zara since 2.30 a.m. the previous morning, which was around the same time that he had left for work. When the police questioned him, you know, like, why the hell did it take you nearly 12 hours to report Zara missing? He stated that Zara was super moody and she kind of like never left her room and she always stayed in there and like moped around in there. So when he hadn't seen her for a few hours, he didn't think anything of it. He just thought, you know, she was in her room. The next day, police interviewed Adam and Elisa again. And this time they searched their home with cadaver dogs. Those dogs ended up giving positive alerts indicating that there were human remains on Adam and Elisa's car. Police ended up taking swabs of potential bloodstains and an Amber Alert was issued for Zara that day. That same day, Elisa was arrested for a number of crimes. These weren't related to Zara being missing. She was arrested for threats, writing bad checks, not returning loaned property, and also driving without a license. Elisa was then given a polygraph test, 
and she was asked if she knew anyone that would hurt Zara or if she hurt Zara or if she wrote the ransom note. Elisa massively failed this polygraph test and she was also charged with obstruction after she admitted that she was the one that actually wrote that ransom note, which completely wasted police's time so they ended up jailing Elisa that day. Adam then comes back and admits that the last time he actually saw Zara was not at 2.30 a.m. that morning, but that he actually hadn't seen Zara since October 6th, which was three days before he reported her missing. How do you not see your child for three days when you live in the same home? Like, okay, maybe you're working a lot, but you don't go and even like peek through their door, like check on them. It's just so strange to me. Then in their further investigation, police then realized they hadn't been able to confirm Zara's whereabouts for at least a month. By October 12th, the police were pretty certain that 10 year old Zara was probably no longer alive. The police then made a statement saying that the Amber Alert that was issued was now canceled and it was now a homicide investigation. Over the next few days, police just searched and searched for any signs of Zara. They drained ponds, they looked in wooded areas, they, you know, checked landfills with cadaver dogs and they found nothing. They even went door to door to people in the area with Zara's picture, hoping that someone had seen something or heard something. Adam, being the dumbest father ever, then tells police that he had barely spent any time with Zara in the past five months. Months. Five months. So now he says the last time that he believes that he remembers seeing Zara was like two weeks ago. So then in late October 2010, Elisa's bond was raised from $40,000 to $65,000 because they believed Elisa to be a flight risk. Amber, Elisa's daughter, actually testified that her mother had mentioned to her that she was going to be leaving North Carolina the day before she was arrested. Amber also mentioned that her mother had told her that she was actually involved in another online relationship with a man from England who had sent her thousands and thousands of dollars. The prosecutor stated that Elisa had failed to show up at other court dates for other charges, therefore her attempt to lower her bond was declined. At this point, the police were so certain that Elisa was the one who harmed Zara. So on October 24th, 2010, they drove Elisa at a nearby location near her home to look for Zara. Elisa then led them to a location and told the police that they would be able to find Zara's blood, bones, and bodily fluid in the drain pipes of that home. Elisa's cell phone actually also played a part in determining where Zara would be found because her phone like pinged in all these certain locations. So on October 27th, 2010, police found Zara's prosthetic leg near Dudley Shoals Road, which is where they used to live. This discovery then prompted, you know, an intense search of the area, including along the banks and water of a nearby creek. And eventually they found a bone in that area in early November, 2010. And they sent it to the crime lab for testing. And a week later on November 10th, 2010, less than a week before Zara's 11th birthday, police found additional human remains along the banks of the Little River, the same general area where all these other parts of Zara were found. Later, a logger who was working in the nearby woods, close to where Zara's prosthetic leg had been found, they found a briefcase. And inside the briefcase, there was a blanket stained with blood. And then after this, the police believed that Zara was dismembered. Oh my God. In January, 2011, Elisa apparently told police that Zara had died on 24th September, 2010, two weeks before they actually reported her missing. And she claimed that Zara just died naturally, a 10 year old just dying naturally with no reason. And she states that she came home one day, she went to check in on Zara and Zara was just lying unresponsive in her bed. She states she then tried to perform CPR for one whole hour before accepting that Zara had passed away. You know, she just accepted it. She didn't call an ambulance because she already accepted it, guys. So why do you need to call an ambulance, right? Why call for help? Because she accepted it. She accepted the fact that her stepdaughter had passed away naturally. She then states after this, Adam was the one who dismembered Zara. She claimed that she then helped Adam dispose of Zara's parts the following day, which would have been September 25th. 
She claimed that the reason why they dismembered Zara is because they just didn't know what to do. Some people are just so smart. Like you question, like there's, how can you be so intelligent? You know what I mean? But this story actually conflicted with the story of a furniture store manager who claims that Zara and Elisa actually visited his furniture store on September 25th. So the timelines didn't match up. Police then found further evidence that Elisa and possibly Adam, together with another man, would participate in role-playing games online in an online chat room, the same chat room that she had met Adam in, and one of the games involved role-playing out the Chainsaw Massacre. And this game had allegedly been played on September 22nd, two days before Elisa claims that Zara, you know, died naturally in her sleep. While researching this case, and when I researched that part, I, it didn't really click in my head what they were saying until I'm saying it right now. If that is true, because we really don't know the truth, we don't know what they tell us is true or not, I'm talking about Elisa. If they were actually involved in a chainsaw massacre role play and then Zara turned up dismembered, oh my god, I really hope that this kind of shit doesn't really take place in real life. Like, you can find people online who want to do that kind of stuff to someone in your home, like, what the actual, oh my god. Adam, in the meanwhile, has denied any involvement in Zara's death. He states there's no way he would do that to his baby, and there's no way in the world that he would hurt his own daughter. Adam's attorney claims that this was only Elsa's attempt of a pathetic distraction. In February 2011, an autopsy conducted ruled out that Zara had died a natural death. Not many of Zara's bones were able to be found, and therefore examined, so the autopsy concluded that she had died from undetermined homicidal violence. Zara's skull, her right arm, and most of both her legs have never been recovered. On Monday, February 21st, 2011, Elisa was found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to 18 years in prison. However, shortly after, she got an additional 10 years added onto her sentence due to further drug charges. No charges related to Zara's disappearance or death have been filed against her father, Adam Baker. He says he regrets the choices that he made and he believes that Zara would still be alive today if he had never brought Elisa into their lives. Ugh, this one is just, just to think of what that poor little 10 year old endured. Not only did she have to go through cancer and suffer for those 18 months of her life and then the fact that her mother left her and there's just so many things that I just feel so sorry for her and I hope she was able to live somewhat of a happy life, but I mean, how can you really say that? Her freaking stepmother dismembered her, you know what I mean? So let me know your thoughts on this case below, what you guys think, and go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you wanna check out some of my other videos, click over here, and I will see you in my next one, guys. Besitos, Mwah. bye.